It's the bourbon Q that Fred knows here on Distillers Row Correct. in Bardstown, Kentucky during Kentucky Bourbon Festival 2011. I've enjoyed this every year. This is like one of my favorite times with you is the bourbon Q. How did the bourbon Q start? My dad started having these parties about 15 years ago, inviting friends and family and customers to come by and eat a little bourbon, eat a little food, drink a little bourbon, tell a few stories. And I'm carrying a tradition on today. I mean, I think it's important to do what we used to do. And Dad enjoyed it, and I enjoy it, and we'll keep doing it as long as I'm kicking. We're going to throw a plum bay, some uh, baby pot ribs, and then the buffet line will be open, and you guys will enjoy it. And you threw a little of Booker bourbon right there on the on the barbecue. You had some Bookers right there to... To give some flavor. Yeah, we did a little flambe of the pork. That was one of Dad's traditions that we've carried on. And it's, I mean, we don't change much. I mean, when you got a family that's been making bourbon since 1795, seven generations, you know, we just keep passing it on from generation to generation. Same thing with the parties. Once you figure out how to throw a good party, you just keep doing it the same way. <laughs> There's it, when I hear you tell stories about it's so amazing, and you know, and I never had the the opportunity to meet. Your dad, but there's so right. many stories that are that are really just ingrained in this whole culture of bourbon, and so many have come back to Booker, and they, you know, and they and people talk to you, and, and you know, you're leaving a legacy. You know, it's just to me, it's just incredible. I don't, I see legacy in other brands, but I don't see it anywhere like I see it with Jim Beam. Right. Well, that's where I'll be. So you know, Booker's so. gonna be in there because Booker's got a good heart. Yeah, we, really good. Yeah, oh. We had a lot of fun. What's he had, he had what, a good ride. That so. was about ten years old. I said, Booker, I said, we're going to, we were sitting in the kitchen there. I said, how would you like to go bear hunting with us, Booker? Bear hunting? He said, John, you don't want to kill no bar. Go on, let him, John, you don't want to kill no bar. And I thought, come on, Booker, we're going bear hunting. They're just bears, they're going to make great trophies. John, you don't want to kill no bar, they're just like we are. <laughs> Can't you hear him? I guarantee it. Go on, the same John, time. you don't want to kill no bar. <laughs> All right. Well, we're lucky that, you know, seven generations of beams to be involved in the business. And I mean, we've been carrying it on from generation to generation to generation, and we're still doing it today. You know, I'm, my picture's on the bottles of Jim Beam, which is really cool. To think That's pretty that, cool. That oh, it's real cool. I mean, you got seven pictures, seven guys who really did work making the bourbon and going on the road and selling it, and that's what I do today. And this is the house that Jim Beam lived in, that we're standing in the backyard of in the smokehouse. Yeah, Jim Beam lived here. Uh, his son stayed here some. My dad, Booker No, lived here. Mom lives here now. I live right next door, and at some point I'm sure I'll move in here. I'll be living here, and then my son will move in here later, later too. So we don't change much. Don't move far. i got one more move, and that'll probably be to the graveyard, and that'd be it. <laughs> This is what, in the, from the 1900s? How old is this house? The house was built in 1820. Okay. And uh, we've been, the family's had it since 1900. So and the smokehouse is about sm that old too. Yeah, smokehouse used to be when the school, this was a military school. And this is where they kept the weapons. This was the armory. And when Jim B moved in, he turned it into a smokehouse to cure hams and meat because he had a farm here too. And we peeked our heads in here. We had been by here before several times, but I said, we have to do a tasting in here with you. I think it would just be perfect place perfect, for a tasting. Perfect spot for a tasting. Used to, be a, used to be armed with ammunition. Now we're armed with some great bourbon. Right. Oh, yeah. I mean, me and Dad drank a little bourbon in here. Uh, I mean, my friends have drank a little bourbon in here. Now me and you are going to drink a little bourbon in here. I'm honored. I, tr I truly am. That's, that's where you get out back. You're out back from behind the house. Uh, the women don't know what you're doing in the meat house. This is kind of a man cave, <laughs> you know. We got hams if we're hungry. We got bourbon if we're thirsty. Don't get no better than this. I don't think it does. This is this is the perfect man cave. Well, there's been a few bourbons that have been released since the last time I talked with you, and those have been Devil's Cut and Knob Creek Single Barrel. Which do you want? Which do you want to try first? I will do Devil's Cut first. You know, and then we'll go to the Knob Creek Single Barrel second, a little higher in proof. Start with lower one. I mean, you know, you got the Devil's Cut. You know, this product we're playing on sweating of a barrel. Put some water in a barrel. 
you know, because there's still two gallons of whiskey left in the wood after we dump the barrel. You know, we use some water to draw that out, then take that water and reduce six-year-old Jim Beam down to 90 proof. And we took the, you know, the old adage of the evaporation during aging is known as the angel's share. So what's left in that wood is the devil's cut. So that's where we got the name and that's how we got the technique. Six year old, 90 proof. How do you actually get the, uh, the bourbon out of the wood? We put water in the barrel and we agitate it in a shaker, much like a paint shaker. And when we do that, we take that water and then cut barrel strength, Jim Beam six year old, down to 90 proof. And is this a, it's like a six-year-old, was it a six-year-old barrel or how old was it? Six-year-old, yep, yep. So the bourbon, that you're, the bourbon that you're cutting it with is six-year-olds old and so was the barrel? Yep. All right, well, cheers. Here's the devil's cut. More tannins, more wood. You know, that's what devil's cut's all about, more flavor. There's a lot of wood in this. You know, one of the very first things I ever thought of when I reviewed this was, it's spicier. I get some cinnamon, I get right. some heat, but it's just really just robust and rounded. It's just really, mm -hmm. it's a very it, luscious bourbon. That's where it comes from, that process of sweating more of that whiskey out of the wood. It's a little more intense, a little more tannins, a little more of the oak, and then you take that water and cut that barrel strength six-year-old Jim Beam down. Now, I've heard stories, I don't know if this is true, Brett, but I've heard stories about how perhaps those that were underage sometimes would get a barrel, put some water in it. This was this is kind of how the the whole concept so, came about. Is that how did you used yeah. to do that? Sweating barrels, yeah. That's what all people in Central Kentucky. There's a lot of used <laughs> bourbon barrels around. Right. And an old timer taught me how to do it years ago. <laughs> I know, and that's just one of them things you learn growing up in this part of the world. I mean, that's one of the fringe benefits of growing up in the bourbon capital of the world. <laughs> Uh, was it good or bad? I'm not going to sit here and say, but it's just part of growing up here. And this is the very first time any bourbon company has done the sweating of the barrels for a bourbon-like devil's cut. Right. It's uh, pretty amazing. It's not anything new. I mean, it's new to the market, but the technique's been around for many, many years. You have a toast that is uh, maybe rather appropriate here for the devil's cut. Oh, for that sure. You, that you taught me several years back. What's that toast? Well, it's my dad's toast, and may there be no hell. And if there is, I will see you there. Cheers. <laughs> I really like this one. I think it's a good one. All right, let's try the um, Knob Creek Single Barrel Reserve next. Yeah, this is a single barrel version of our Knob Creek. You know, when all the other Knob Creeks, nine years old. This is a nine-year-old bourbon. But what we've done is we've selected, pre-selected barrels and taken those barrels and dumped that whiskey from one barrel at a time. It's a true single barrel product. So you don't mingle them to get a consistent average. You're just letting each one stand alone. And we don't chill filter this. And it's bottled at 120 proof. So it's gonna be a little more flavor, a little more boldness. You know, so. How did this uh, How did this bourbon come about? Was it something you wanted to do for a while, or? Well, it really came from consumers requesting single barrel product. You know, we never did single barrel because Booker was never a big fan of single barrel because of the variation in flavor from barrel to barrel. But drinkers of bourbon now kind of like that crapshoot of not knowing exactly what they're going to taste till they put it in their mouth. And with a true single barrel bourbon, you don't know what it's going to be like. You know, bottles are only alike if they come from the same barrel. You go from different barrels, they taste different. And we don't seal filter, so there's more flavor. Excellent. I mean, the color, the nose. It's a Pretty bold intense. nose. Yeah, yeah, it's very nice. Non-seal filtration, you get more solids. You know, it's closer to a true barrel bourbon. And you like that, don't you? You like yes, that sir. true barrel, don't you? Oh, I like it a bird like that, and you can take the water and add to it if you want, or a cube of ice, swirl it a little bit, open it up. What do you think? Give it a little taste. A lot of layers there. That is intense. 
Big has some finish. great depth. Yep. I even get some some somewhat fruity notes to it towards well, the end. You know, and that's the nine years in the barrel. Right. You know, that, that helps it quite a bit. Nine years, you know, non-shell filtration, you're getting more of the wood coming through again. I think people like that. You know, they like to see that you've left that bourbon alone for nine years, let the barrel do its thing, let the change of seasons here in Kentucky do their thing, and in the end, you get the nectars of the gods. Every time I talk to you, I learn something new. And a lot of what I learn is just the wisdom and the... The honesty that you speak from, I just, I, you know, it's just, there's, there's, there's no one like you in bourbon country or anywhere, and I appreciate that so much about you. I mean it. I'm a straight shooter, you know. I'm not okay. going to sit there and try to pull your leg, and, you know, I'm not a marketing guy because I don't have no big story. I just tell you the straight stuff, <laughs> and, you know. We, and, I, and I like that. Give small where they may. I'm no better. People say, oh, you're a celebrity. I say, what the hell's a celebrity? I'm just me. I'm Fred No. I make bourbon, and I love hanging out with folks and having fun and sharing the products that my family taught me how to make. I mean, right. bourbon turns the conversation into a party, you know, and people come here as friends and they leave as family. I consider you part of the family. We've been hanging out for many years. That's right. And we've consumed a few glasses of bourbon together. We got more to consume. We ain't done yet, brother. <laughs> and we won't be done until I put one of us in the ground. <laughs> I appreciate that a lot, man. You're awesome. Oh, shit, I'm, I'm me. Thank you. I'll be the same all the time. <laughs> Thanks for the interview. My it's pleasure. always a pleasure, man. You're the best. You're awesome. It's always fun, brother. Cheers.